So here we're going to uh, wrap up intermolecular forces and how they relate to physical properties. So we're going to talk about uh, melting point, uh, boiling point, and solubility. Let's just do a quick uh, recap of the intermolecular forces. And remember that London forces are uh, supposedly the weakest of all intermolecular forces. And then you have dipole-dipole interactions, which can occur if you have a polar covalent bond present. Um, and then hydrogen bonding. Uh, which requires nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine to be present. All right, so um, one thing about hydrogen bonding that I want to point out is that if you're talking about intermolecular hydrogen bonding of a molecule with another molecule that's identical to it, then you need uh, an NH, an OH, or an HF uh, present, right? If you're talking about intermolecular hydrogen bonding with other molecules like solvent or other uh, molecules that are not identical to the molecule that you that you're dealing with, then you just need a nitrogen, an oxygen, or a fluorine to be present. So let's talk about the boiling point real quick. On uh, the boiling point, obviously the temperature where a liquid becomes a gas. Notice here, um, as the intermolecular force strength increases, so does the boiling point. So if we compare compounds with a similar molecular weight, um, then we can say that a compound that uh, only experiences London forces should have a lower boiling point than one that experiences a dipole-dipole interaction, which in turn should have a lower boiling point than one that experiences hydrogen bonding. So the force of the intermolecular, or the strength of the intermolecular force from London to dipole to hydrogen bonding also corresponds with an increase in boiling point. So let's look at some examples here. Here we have pentane. There are no uh, polar covalent bonds, so there's no dipole. Uh, there are no hydroxyl groups, no NH groups, um, or no fluorines. So this is strictly London forces. And then when we, when we compare this to butanal, uh, which is butanaldehyde, this CHO is actually an aldehyde. When we compare that, Look at the difference in the boiling point. You go from 36 degrees Celsius to 76. And that's because this one, this molecule, the uh, aldehyde, has a strong dipole. And so it can or orient itself with the other dipoles of the other molecules of butanal that are uh, with it. And so those dipole-dipole interactions serve to increase uh, the boiling point. All right. And then with butanol, now you go from dipole to hydrogen bonding now look at the difference in boiling point here you go 76 degrees here to 118 degrees celsius here and again the oh can hydrogen bond with another oh group the alcohol can hydrogen bond with another alcohol as you're setting up a network and it's making it more difficult to pull those molecules apart because of that strong intermolecular force and in doing that you increase the boiling point so you can see again that so you can see the boiling points are going to differ based on the strength of the intermolecular force that is holding those molecules together so remember for uh, compounds with similar functional groups if a compound has a larger surface area uh, the boiling point is going to be higher the more polarizable the atoms are the boiling point is going to be higher and this is an example of surface area where you have three pentanone and an acetone you can see that the surface area is much larger even though they both have um, carbonyl groups they both uh, have dipole dipole interactions but the surface area here is increased and if you remember when we talk about the London forces as you increase surface area you also increase contact points for those temporary dipoles that you see with the London forces. All right, it's, again, the example is like Velcro. The longer the strip of Velcro, the more contact points you have. More contact points, the stronger the intermolecular force. So here's an example of polarizability and how it affects boiling point. And we know that iodine is more polarizable than fluorine because you think about the distance of the electron clouds from the nucleus, and you know, you remember the uh, definition of polarizability is your, the ability to uh, distort the electron cloud and so remember with polarizability as you're able to distort the electron cloud you also create more contact points and so look at the if you think about 
uh, this end of the uh, methyl iodine or iodomethane uh, molecule being negative and this end being positive here then because this is more polarizable you have more contact points between this side of the molecule and the opposite side of another molecule which would come here right because this is a dipole dipole interaction and you don't have that here in fluoromethane and so because of, uh, you see the boiling point here being 42 as opposed to negative 78 for fluoromethane now let's look at the melting point and again melting going from a solid to a liquid um, the stronger the intermolecular force here the higher the melting point it parallels the boiling point um, observation and so let's look at uh, some examples here so here again the trend is from London forces to dipole interactions to hydrogen bonding so the melting point is going to depend on what functional groups are present especially when we're dealing with covalent molecules uh, whether or not you have uh, when you compare the intermolecular forces that are present the melting point is going to increase with the strength of the intermolecular force so let's look at the, the uh, couple of examples here here we have again pentane butanol and one butanol you go from London to dipole to hydrogen bonding and then you also see an increase in the melting point going from uh, strictly London forces to dipole forces with butanol to hydrogen bonding with butanol and it's the same uh, reasoning because as the intermolecular force increases it becomes more difficult uh, to break these molecules apart what you see is an increase in the melting point based on how strong the force is that's holding the molecule together All right. one other one thing to, to uh, note with melting point is the observation of symmetry right and what, what I mean by symmetry is basically um, if you had to describe it it would be uh, how circular a molecule is All right. if you look at the two electron clouds around uh, these two molecules you can see that this one is a little bit more circular in nature than this one and with melting point if a, if a, a solid is uh, packed well right it's going to be um, a lot more difficult uh, to break it up right so let's look at these two examples you have isopentane neopentane isopentane packs relatively well but not as well as neopentane simply because of the symmetrical structure and because of that uh, there's more disorder here and so it's much easier to uh, melt isopentane which melts at negative um, 160 as opposed to melting neopentane which if it existed as a solid it would melt at negative 17 so the more ordered the structures are within the solid then the more difficult it is to get those get that solid to melt. The physical property we're going to discuss is solubility and I'm going to try to do this uh, pretty quickly but solubility is simply the extent to which a compound dissolves in a liquid. So here's your compound you add it to a liquid and that liquid basically causes this compound to disperse by the liquid itself surrounding particles or molecules of that compound. So you don't lose any energy and the solvent basically surrounds the solute and in order for that to happen some interactions must take place All right, so it's important to remember this really key term here especially in organic chemistry is that like dissolves like so polar compounds like to, will be dissolved in polar solvents nonpolar compounds are going to be dissolved in nonpolar solvents and so so on and so forth um, so this is an example of a polar non-organic solvent that's water polar organic solvents uh, are on this list namely alcohols and uh, carboxylic acids and then carbonyl containing solvents like acetone and ethyl acetate and also ethers and then nonpolar organic solvents are solvents like hexane hexane uh, pentane octane uh, and carbon tetrachloride like that you have that you see on this list Alright, so 
how do we know if a compound is soluble in water? Well, it's, it's basically a Las Vegas bet, right? Phone in your bets at 5 to 1. What that means is that you have to have an F-O-N and you have to have one of those atoms, fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen, for every five carbons. So phone in at five to one. F-O-N, five to one. That's how you tell if a compound is going to be able to be soluble in water. All right, you have these two uh, examples here where butane, you have four carbons, but you have no hydrogen bonding functional groups. And so it's insoluble in water, right? This is nonpolar, so it's going to be sol uh, soluble in a nonpolar uh, solvent. And then acetone, you have a hydrogen bonding oxygen atom, right? And you have three carbons, so the ratio here is three to one. So yes, it's soluble in water, whereas this is insoluble in the uh, nonpolar organic solvent.